Hello, Floss 2. It's Arlene here. It's Sunday, November 26th, and I'm glad to be here with you. I really wanted to do this today in daylight hours, because uh, that's the only time I'm going to be able to do a video is weekend time in daylight hours. And I've been thinking about it for the past few days. For those here in the United States, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving time. Um, because I'm recording this the Sunday after Thanksgiving. I was really fortunate that I had an entire week off from school. I, we had parent-teacher conferences right before this week. So I was at school, normal school days, like that Thursday, that Friday, but I was also at school all Thursday night and all Friday night, and for some hours on Saturday, doing parent-teacher conferences. Um, so we deserved a week off. <laughs> So it's the first time I've been at a school that has had um, an entire week. So I really appreciated that. And then I uh, drove up my family and where I grew up in Connecticut. Um, my parents are still in the same house where I grew up. My sisters, one sister and her family live about a half hour in one direction. The other sister about a half hour in the other direction. So I was, drove up on Thursday, which is just the best possible day to drive traffic wise. Spent a couple days, came back yesterday on Saturday, um, and just spent the other parts of this week here in a stitching kind of world, which I just really appreciated. Working on my own projects, trying to watch some floss tube. I won't say catching up on floss tube because that's just an impossible task, um, but at least watching some more than I had in the past few weeks. Um, on my drives, I listen to Fiber Talk, Gary and Christine. If you don't, please go listen to them. Um, I unfortunately get so far behind, and I'll say that I didn't run into too much traffic such that I didn't actually even get caught up. Um, but they are my buddies in the car on long drives, um, just because I can listen to a few shows in a row. Um, and just know that my mind can stay in a, a good stitching world. There are, they talk about their midweek shows talk about a variety, they, the two of them just chatting, and then their Sunday shows, they're co having a conversation with a guest. And um, there's just so many topics that get brought up. And I seriously want to like be jotting down things to look up when I come home. <laughs> um, like even last night when I got back here, I was online from their website, you can go and they've got a few links. And I was looking up the designer of one show and something else they were talking about in another show. Anyway, that's just once again my plug. Fiber Talk podcasts are just great to listen to, particularly in the car. Um, for me, that works for me. Um, for other people, podcasts are great for listening to when you're stitching. Um, I tried once listening to them on my car ride to school uh, about a half hour each way. It could be more depending on time of day. Um, and my challenge is, is that because I love my stitching world so much, it was really hard to shut it off when I got to school. And, and not just to shut it off, but to shut off my brain and to switch my brain over to my school world and my teaching world. And it just, it doesn't work for me. Um, that's not to say I don't think about a lot of stitching related things in my car ride um, but I just learned that devoting a car ride to like listening to a podcast um, just doesn't work for me on my way to school all right that's a really long way of getting into so here I am um, I as others have said or at least some of the ones that I've listened to this week on um, floss tubes I can't let this week end without just saying how thankful I am for the floss tube community for the extensions that that has brought into my life through new Facebook groups and Instagram and all of that but mostly through this interaction on floss tube um, something I didn't have a year ago and um, you know we go around the table and say what we're thankful for and um, my family doesn't get this they just don't. You know, I've been stitching for a long time. They're aware. They they just don't understand. Um, 
And so I couldn't in any way verbalize what I was the most grateful for or thankful for as, I mean, sure, to say thankful for the food and for family and those, of course, of course. Um, but I need to say here how thankful I am for this community. I've also been thinking about this week and sort of in a silly way, but also in a very genuine way. Um, realizing that as I watch, as I try to watch a few more this week of you all than um, I've had time to do in the last couple of months, a few months since school has started, since the summertime. Um, thank you for coming back and watching me. I know that my videos are a little different than a lot of the floss tubers. There's so many of you who show such amazing pro or show progress on amazing project projects. So many of you have so many different projects going. Um, so many of you are very devoted to cross stitch. Um, so many of you share um, gifts exchange, share things that you've bought. Um, I won't say there's any one way, one right way to do a video or any like that, but I think a lot of us could probably agree that there's a similarity to a lot of videos. And I'm just realizing, I, I've known this from the first video I did, that I don't do a lot of those things. Um, I don't have a, a whip parade going through or even multiple projects going through because I don't really work on multiple projects at a time. I Most of the things I've shared have just been about the things I've done over the years. I don't buy a lot, so I don't have those kind of portions to show. Um, those of you who, who show video, who do videos every week, and I, I count on you, you know, we've got Bendy Stitchy Michelle, who, you know, Tuesday like clockwork, she's there, and Pam and Steph on Sundays, and any number of other people who maybe they don't do regularly on a particular day of the week, but they're regulars, and I so admire them, and um, I don't know, when, I, when I've when i spent a few days with my family and I, I do have the moments of feeling a little bit of the, the black sheep that is eh, put up with or accepted for who I am, you know, I, I appreciate those of you out there in Floss Tube world that have accepted me here. Um, and I, I go back to that phrase of my people. And I realize that it's been quite some time since I said that phrase first, although it's been um, showing up a lot. So I just want to make sure I explain it or s tell the story again for those who might be new. And a few years back, I had this wonderful, amazing experience of going on a trip to France with a group. And it was organized by a needlework person. And I realized it's still on my I, I only showed one one portion or one piece of that trip and there's a couple of other things that are still on the to-do list to show on floss two videos um, but one piece of that trip that was the highlight for me was going to this international lace um, event um, one day we were only there one day and we were there just to like for what was op open to the public I mean public people public Anyone could come in and buy a ticket to go in for the day to see the vendors, to see the exhibits. There were also classes and things going on for multiple days. Um, and it, it, the tour was about 15 people. And everyone knew that I was a lace maker and, and knew that that was the day I was most looking forward to on this trip. And by that point, you know, different pockets of people gather or figure each other out and sort of stay together on in other museum visits and other parts of the tour. And so we were, we had checked in, we had gotten our tickets, we were going into this venue and I turned to my um, friends and I was literally getting ready to say that, you know, I, I need to do this one on my own, <laughs> you know, that I need to be on my own pace. I need to visit these vendors and all. And I didn't even have to say it. My friend, Mary, she turned to me and she said, Arlene, you, you know, you go, you need to go. We get it. We get it. We are your friends, but these are your people go enjoy buy all your stuff go and that phrase we are your friends but these are your people and she was referring to lace makers and all that i could be interacting with but that phrase of finding your people and so that's why it's come up in my videos ever since i first shared that and i think there's been some other floss tubers that totally get it and have connected with that phrase 
so here I am, my people, sharing with you. Um, so, okay, I haven't even showed anything yet, and I'm already 10 minutes in because now I'm rambling. Let me start going. So first of all, a catch up with the one piece of stitching I am working on now, which is, um, I showed this in my last video. Oh. So this is a piece called Solar Flare. This is the original colors of it. It is designed by a woman named Ro Pace. She does a lot of counted canvas work designs. Um, I got this pattern. I, I'd seen pictures of it. I was very intrigued by the challenge. The colors did nothing for me, even though I loved the effect that the colors could do. And I knew I wanted to get it and study it and figure it out how it was done and then figure out what I was going to do with it and what I what I'm doing with it my own color version now you know it's been so interesting is I've been posting pictures on some Facebook groups there's one picture I did in like a needlepoint group one night one day that I was that it came out very purple and other pictures have been more plum it's kind of washed out what you're seeing is sort of real color wise so I'm doing it in shades of purple. They're like reddish purple. I have moments where it feels like the colors are showing up or are, are working out okay, and I have moments where they're not. Um, sometimes it looks better when I hold it back. Um, and what's really intriguing about this piece, I can't even see what I'm doing, um, is how repetitive the actual stitching is. And you really have to kind of study it to understand that statement. That there's this one um, pattern that just, it gets rotated. Like if you focus here, uh, there, and you see those four blocks. Well, recognize that from here downward is sort of like one odd shape. And then rotate that shape around four times and you get a square. And then that square has been repeated. So I have four square, or excuse me, eight squares total that have been finished. I'm actually, I was actually working on two squares at the same time. I realized last night that I was messing myself up with rotations of colors. So I need to stop that and just focus on one square and just work off of that. Um, and we'll see, you know, the whole, did I get the transitions of colors correct? If I was picking out, if I were picking threads differently, would I, would, if I'm starting over, would I pick the colors differently? Would I pick some different threads? Maybe. Um, but this is where it is. I may, I will see. I, well, I'll get to my stitching future projects, but they, I, I'm, because this is coming out small, um, a ruler sitting somewhere. Maybe you could see my hand. You could see how relatively small it is. Mm, seven inches, eight inches, maybe. Um, yeah, seven inches. Um, I am pretty sure this is rolled up. This is on a 22 count Congress cloth, um, but it was hand dyed and uh, by Silk Weavers, Needleworkers Delight, and they, um, would, in the dyeing process of this Congress cloth, which should be a stiff, not as stiff as canvas would be, but stiffer than a typical, like, Ada fabric would be. Um, but it's definitely softer than other Congress cloths that I've worked on, and that's because, I think, of the dyeing process. But anyway, I think I, I've rolled it up. I have enough here that I have this idea that I might totally reverse the colors with the light in the center and the dark on the edges and do another version of it and I'll have enough fabric that I can do that and, and cut them and be two separate pieces. Um, will that be the absolute next project I do? Probably not. I need, I'll need i need a break from it, but I will continue finish. Uh, I'll, this will be what I will work on until it's finished. Um, I am mostly a one project at a time kind of person. There's breaks of that, but this is definitely what I'll be working on until it, fin till it is finished. Um, so wanted to show that. So then 
I realize, as, as you probably have realized, that I do a lot of things other than cross stitch. And um, I actually don't do that much cross stitch. If you were to like watch all my videos and actually record all the things that I've shown of the pieces that I've worked on over the years, you know, how many are cross stitch and how many are not, there, there's a fair amount in the not cross stitch category. Um, but as I've been thinking about this, I, I was like, well, what, what do I still have that I haven't shown yet that's cross stitch? And I realized there's um, a few things and I took out one of them. It's, this is an unfinished piece um, and I need to finish it. I, I know why I stopped it. Um, and it, for silly reasons, um, I need to just power through and finish it at some point um, because it is worth finishing it and framing it. So um, you all know, or unless you're new here, welcome if you are. Um, I also do lace making and I'm gonna talk about that later on. I usually save lace stuff to the end, but this is a little crossover piece between cross stitch and lace making. So I, some number of years ago in a uh, time that I was at a lace um, summer week there, one of my classmates showed or had a picture of or somehow this thing and the picture just as always does not do it justice, but it was enough for me to trace it down. It's a cross stitch picture. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the stitching of it rather than the picture. So this, this is the pattern. So this is a lace maker. Now, if you've seen my videos where I've shown my lace or I've like shown you all me making lace, this is not the type of uh, lace pillow that I use. Um, I think I've got the terminology right. This would be called a, a bolster pillow and I use a cookie pillow. Um, a bolster pillow, which would sit like in a basket or depending on it could also just sit on a lap um, and there are different countries and different um, traditions that would use a bolster in different ways. She's using it. It's like a round three-dimensional kind of pillow and in this picture she's using it in one way. There are other countries, I'm thinking particularly Italy, the Italian lace Cantu that I took a class this summer where the bolster is used going the long way. like where that hole is kind of facing you. Anyway, th so this is cross stitch. Yeah, it's cross stitch. Uh, it is, if I bring it up close, um, 32 count, I think it's, I don't think it's 36. 32 count over one. I was, I mean, you could see it's one of these things that just looks like a picture that, you know, you hold it back and you think, is that a picture? You know, like Cades or, or any of those. What so intrigued me about this pattern is that it's it literally uses like eight colors. Like that's it, the sepia color of an old photograph. And that's what it is. It's, it's, it's like a computer generated thing of an old photograph. You get that vision by just um, eight colors or not even. I, um, got tired of this project and I got it to a certain point, stopped it. I made the decision that I would never go the whole length. There was just no point. And that wherever this ended on as a page or something would stand alone as a lovely picture. And so really what I need to do is just force myself to get this part down. I don't, I don't, I don't think I need her feet. It totally, for those who know what it is, it is showing a picture of a lace maker from 200 years ago. I don't know, you could study her clothing and try and date it. Um, but you totally get it from that. And so it's, it's just a cross stitch piece that does deserve to be finished and I just need to make it happen. Um, I just have so much going in my mind of what comes next in the stitching process. Um, oh yeah, so here are the threads. And like, I don't even think I will 
Like I never use these two darkest shades and I think I won't. If I, I got them, either they're for the very, I think that bottom corner that I'm never gonna use. So really, one, two, three, four, five, six. This whole thing is made in only six colors. Like that alone I think is just such a fascinating thing about the, the process of colors and stitching. Six colors. So there's a little piece of cross stitch to share with you today. Um, yes, she deserves to be finished. You don't need to yell at me on that one. I need to get her finished. I need to get her framed. She is the perfect crossover for me of my stitching worlds and my lace worlds. And she needs to get done. Um, so I had this list going. I had started when I first started doing floss tube videos of what are all the things I could do or show in floss tube videos. Um, various projects over the years. I mean, the things that hang on my wall are just sort of like, the okay, these are all the obvious things. And then I started adding to it all the things that, you know, weren't so obvious or had been tucked away. Like she, this lace maker, on um, the pattern. Oh, I was going to say something about that. I... This was from a UK company. I remember order, it was not like at the time I got it, which easily was over 10 years ago or probably about 10 years ago. It definitely was not like a PDF kind of thing at all. It was definitely something I got in the, like I ordered it online, got in the mail. I will put the link to that website. I was just on the website checking right before this video because I had this vague idea that there was a similar one, you know, old photograph, sepia colored, that was like a woman embroidering. And I thought, ooh, there might be people interested in it. Website still exists, the company still exists, this woman's name, Carol Leather, it's still under her name. This pattern was, I couldn't find it on there. Couldn't find anything that looked like this at all. I mean, she does, this woman has a lot of black work stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll put her, this link below. Um, but I could not find this pattern or what my brain told me also existed at the time was a similar one for like an embroiderer. Um, but if anyone like explores it further and finds out that there's another one out there, let me know. Or if I Google around and find some more, I'll also put that below. Okay, back to what I was saying. On my list of things that I would share eventually in floss tube videos. So back during the summer, there was a period of time where it started with one person and then it got, you know, lots of people started showing, um, you know, whip parades certainly have happened over the months. And there was a period of time over the summer where people were showing, and I don't know if they called it their stash parade or just showing my stash. Um, and I meant to look up what people called those videos, but just here are all the patterns I own or it's like all the patterns I own. Um, and so I put it on my list of things I could do is like show my stash. Um, and, you know, it boils down to this. There's so many times where I've gotten such the nicest comments of when I've shown a video that particularly has a lot of different types of stitching and people have said, oh my God, you, you've stitched everything, every kind of thing that's out there. And I want to say, uh, no, I haven't. There's just so many kinds of needlework out there um and i've collected books and patterns on a lot of them but i haven't gotten to a lot of those so i had this idea that i would start pulling out a whole bunch of things that are on my to-do list now this isn't even my whole stash of stuff because i have so many more i mean you can you only see some of and i showed you my bookshelves once um there's so much more but these are like you know high on the list but not even the highest because nothing I'm going to show you is actually the next thing coming up after I'm done with solar flare, <laughs> which is, so I'll just start out here as, as I'm still working on solar flare. I mean, all right, highest on my list on a wish list kind of thing. I, you know, the, my designing world, I just, I love it so much. And in a real world, if I could make models of absolutely everything that I design that, I know that that could help me take my designs to the next level of selling and getting myself out there. And there's some things I've created like models for or pieces of, and I just keep thinking about how do I 
go bigger with all of that. So, but that's a piece is that there's always these ideas of, oh, if I'm going to stitch a model of that one, I'm going to use that thread and that fabric or, oh, I, I want to do this. I mean, so I have three or four things that I've already designed. I've already out there. You could get them on my Etsy store that I'm already thinking, I really want to stitch that. And at the same time, I already have two distinct plans of pieces that I want to work on next, which maybe by the next video I'll be willing to share parts of. But that's what's going to become, it's what I'm starting to work on, at least graphing out wise, while I'm working on solar flare and maybe starting to stitch maybe in the next few weeks. But aside from that, I started to pull out some of the things that I would call like in my stash of, oh, I really need to stitch this, or I really need to like stitch something from this book. And like so many of you, when you did this, of course, it makes me want to say, oh my God, I need more hours of the day. I need more days in the week. I need more weeks of vacation that I could just go full on of just stitching everything. So I'll start with a few cross stitch ones, but I'll be honest, there just weren't that many. I mean, I have, I have plenty of cross stitch things down there. Um, what appeals to me most about cross stitch these days are the things that I'm designing myself. But I'll show you a few. All right, so the few things that I had that at this moment in time appeal to me cross stitch wise. So I had purchased I, I, many of these things. Some of them I could tell you where I got them from. Some I can't. Pretty sure this came from Nordic Needle. I find it so sad that Nordic Needle has closed the store. They still have things going online. It seems to be unknown how long that's going to last. So no promises of anything that I show you could get at Nordic Needle. Um, I will try to show names and websites if you're interested. So um, fractal designs, I know the first time I ever saw them was in, at Nordic Needle catalogs and online and so on. A few times I've seen them stitched in person. Um, I if any of you on floss tube have stitched any of them, please comment below so I can go see any floss tube videos where you've done them. This is the only one I've ever purchased that just really does appeal to me. Um, again, I don't know if I'll ever stitch it. Um, it's just, it would be an intense all coverage thing and I don't know if I'll get there, but the, it does appeal to me. And this, it says xs-collectibles.com is the website. Um, I really like the Northern Expressions patterns. This is the only one I own, but I like a lot of them. And this one, this one I did purchase at a store. The Strawberry Sampler in Pennsylvania, not too far from Winterthur which is a place I've talked about that's in, technically in Delaware, but it's like right near the Pennsylvania-Delaware line. Strawberry Sampler, um, small but good store, great online stuff, really funny newsletters. Sign up for their newsletters. Um, I had stopped there once after being at, at uh, Winterthur. Really, this the pattern and the, the colors especially appeal to me. It's listed as three and only three colors of dinky dyes and um that the model was used for and i just got I, i'm pretty sure if i'm remembering this correctly they had the dinky dyes there in the store and the actual in-person dinky dyes were so not appealing so not close enough to this vision so i don't know if this vision is a i mean it doesn't look computer generated they have some DMC conversion. I mean, it does say, no, 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 this is, it says fabric used for the model. It's on a lilac loom, hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie. Anyway, this one just really appealed to me. Will I ever get to stitching it? I don't know. But a lot of their designs, they are also, you can also find them on Etsy. I know, because that's, when I say I like all their designs, I know it's because I've looked at them at Etsy. Um, she's a Canadian. This pattern I had, I don't know where I got it. Again, it's, it's a geometric, it's got a similar shading thing. I know it appealed to me. Um, it used 
four even shade. Any four solid colors may be used with blending to achieve the shading. And so this is the kind of thing that really appealed with how you could play with any color palette. And I wondered what would happen if you had a, I feel like it exists, some sort of colors that, some sort of um, thread company that has variegated colors that come a color family that has variegated colors in a color family. I don't know. The, again, it's a similar it's a similar idea of geometrics and symmetry that appealed to me. It's whispered by the wind. It's called Sonata. Well, I'm not seeing the website. I don't know where I got this one from. I don't know how long I've owned it. <laughs> then the only other cross stitch I pulled out. And I don't even like this pattern that much, but the same I think a lot of you could really appreciate. My needle and my floss, they comfort me. And then this right down here, stitching mends the soul. If I ever stitched anything like this, I I don't know if I'd put this woman, I, I don't I don't know. This is an inspirational design. It's not something I think I would ever actually stitch as is, but it's definitely in the be inspired by it pile. It's actually Waxing Moon Designs. And they have a website, Waxing Moon Designs. Those were the only cross stitch things that I pulled out that like are at this time in my life have appealed to me. And again, above any of those are things that I've designed that I want, I want to stitch. Um, and I have tons more. And, and yet those tons more are not ones that I'm immediately ready to get rid of and sell off. Because you never know when things are going to change. So but I do have this other pile sitting right here of other things that are not cross stitch. And if you're interested in seeing, I'm going to show. So the, the solar flare that I'm stitching right now, which again, I don't really want to call solar flare because when it's on purple, it's not the same effect as the solar flare, whatever. Um, I have another design that I got years ago that was designed by Row Pace. This is an awful picture because it was a printout like when the ink was dying on her printer. Um, this is like a close up part of it. It's called Venetian Delight. And it uses, just to give you the sense, a total of 18 spools of number 12 Krynic braid, three more of number eight, six of the 1 16th Krynic braid, uh, Krynic ribbon, 1 16th Krynic ribbon, and two more of number four. So there's a lot of gold Krynic in there. It's actually a two layer design. You need two pieces of canvas to do it. I love the idea of the challenge of all that, the unique stitches that are in there. And again, I mean, it's a full rectangular thing. Um, I put it in this binder and it's, you know, a, I think, I'm pretty sure it's like a class project that at some point I was, you're able to purchase from Row. This is, um, and I had started collecting the threads. Now I was gonna change the colors. I did not like the blue green direction. I liked the idea of going in shades of blue. And um, I don't even know, I'd have to like analyze, I don't think this is even all the threads that I would need, but it would be like enough to get me started and then I'd have to explore more. Um, I just, it's, you know, this was, this was a number of years ago that I collected this stuff, had this, and I just, it just didn't make it to the top of the, I'm gonna start stitching it now pile. Around the same time that I got that, I remember I got these th this and the next thing I'm about to show you around the same time and like they were both calling me and I couldn't decide which one do I start because they were both going to be long-term projects and then I started something else as a long-term project. So this is from Nordic Needle. That, so this was 2011. I feel like I had Venetian... I'm not sure. 2011, so Nordic Needle did... Um, a uh, hard anger competition every year. People could send in. Um, there's many beautiful things that have come from that. This 
one is so unique because be, all right, so when you're doing hard anger, I've shown one piece, a fairly large piece that I did. And there's a lot of techniques that I've done that um, when I've done one thing, I'm maybe two, and I could say I've done it and I've enjoyed it and I'm ready to move on to something else. Um, and the hard anger, I, I mean, I've done some little things, I guess in my possession here, anyway. Okay, what makes a lot of hard anger is that you cut threads, you know, like here's another piece from, you know. So you take a piece of linen and you have parts of the linen that are still completely intact and then you have parts of the linen where you've cut out after you've sewn some um, stitches and then you even put in some other stitches. There's lots of sources, there's some floss tubers who've been doing hard anger that you could certainly see. What makes this piece so unique is that there is almost no regular linen left. It's almost all the woven bars. Like, it's like you're starting with a piece of linen and then bit by bit you're cutting it all away. It's fascinating. And here's a close up of one part of it. And I just, I just was so intrigued by it. So I have in a bag, I didn't pull it out, it's boring, fabric and thread. I mean, I, I got a, like a crew or cream colored, a crew, uh, fabric and however many balls of number eight or number 12 pearl. Like this, I have the supplies. I could start this today if I wanted to. Um, and it would be, um, Oh, Marlene Balzer from Canada. Assuming I got the 32 count, I'd have to count, but assuming I got 32 count, the finished size is 24 inches round. So that's a, it's pretty big. And there's no way to, re well, I guess you could do it and just do like the center part and get the vision of what, you, I guess that's one way to make it smaller, is you get this experience of it by just doing the center part. Anyway. I just think this is such a unique piece of hard anger. Maybe someday. Okay, then I need to show you all. Um, there's a woman in Canada named Tanya Berlin. Gary and Christine from Fibertalk, if you guys are watching, if I haven't already told you about her, put her on your list if you don't already have her on your list. I think she would be fascinating to talk to. She, her, she went through, she's Canadian, but she went through the um, like whole three-year course at the Royal School of Needlework. A few years back, a number of years back, I was l lucky enough, I went to this amazing math and art workshop uh, in Canada, um, in Banff, which is outside of, I flew into Calgary. And like any needle worker, <laughs> I was flying in a day early. And what do you do? You Google to see is there any like needlework, anything. And this, this is how I connected with her. And I probably had seen her name on like EGA um, classes. She, she teaches at seminars. And I was just so intrigued. So her website, she does all kinds of needlework, gold work, black work, white work, Jaco Jacobian, Jacobian, um, just all these kinds that are taught at the Royal School. Um, anyway, I contacted her and I said, I, you know, gave, I was going to be in the area and I loved everything I saw on her website and I was so interested in purchasing some kits because she sold her kits. Um, could I actually get the chance to see her things in person. <laughs> like I promised her I would buy some stuff from her if I could come see them. And you know, thank goodness she believed me that I wasn't like some wacky person. She let me come to her home and I got to see all the stuff hanging on her walls. I mean, her home was not set up as a store. You know, she had her whole like basement area as a workspace where she had all these kits and everything and, and all that. And I, it was just wonderful. So I had purchased four kits from her not done a single one of them. 
And frankly though, owning these has prevented me from purchasing some of the other things I'm gonna show you because <laughs> I've told myself, you know, if I haven't done any of these, that stops me from buying other things. I know there's some of you who show wonderful stuff that you purchase and wonderful. I love it. I love it. We all have our own ways of making decisions about stash acquisitions, as it's called. Um, this is my way of, of not overloading myself. Anyway, she, one of her specialties is gold work. This, the pattern she was, I don't, I, I checked to make sure her website is still the same. I will link it below. Go check it out. Beautiful, amazing things. Um, she has the, she had, I don't know if it's still there. I'll check the sampler of these four goal work pieces, teaching all kinds of goal work techniques. Um, the pattern was free online, and this is literally all of the things. I just wanted to know what Goal Work was all about, and here's the way to do it. Get all the supplies you need in one kit, everything. Um, so this, I mean, this is the way to learn Goal Work. The, what has stopped me on this in another project, which I did show in another video, where I took a class, and it was like Goal Work on a small, small scale. This is, this I feel like is the real deal. What I learned is that this project is not going to be a sitting in front of the television on my couch, cross-legged with my stand kind of project. It's going to be sitting up here at the table where I am right now and concentrating in a different kind of way. And I still want to do it someday. It's going to be a different kind of concentration than a typical stitching project for me. So at this point, it remains undone. She had beautiful white work things. And this is this fine, fine, I mean, you wouldn't, I, I don't know if it's cotton or linen. But again, these are all kits. So this has everything I need, including the pattern has already been um, put on here for me. Um, Jacobian, Jacobean modern techniques. This is all, these are DMC, but also some other pieces to it that just, and again, the pattern is already put on here. All like surface embroidery things. And then needle painting. Um, and I'm going to talk more about needle painting in a minute. Before being at her house and seeing this, I had not been exposed to other needle painting um, things. And her directions, I mean, the other thing I did was to see how, amazing like these thick packets are of her like pictures and directions and step-by-step -step guides so I admit I have not done any of these four kits and by owning these it has stopped me <laughs> from purchasing some other stuff which I'm going to get to um what order do I do things <laughs> well all right let me okay this isn't this is all like in no particular order what I'm going to keep showing. I'm going to keep going. This is going to get long. Are you going to stay with me for this? Um, when, well, should I go with the whole spirit of this is why I'm not going to buy any more kits? Yeah, let me, let me show you something else that's in that spirit. So here's a book. This is a beautiful book. Stump Work and Gold Work Embroidery by Jane Nicholas. She is um, from England. On her website, she sells kits for the things that are in here. If I were to do anything from this book, it would be this front cover, which is just stunning. Um, but there are other designs. They are inspired by tiles. Um, again, this is all falls under the category, you would say, of like surface embroidery where you're doing things on top of fabric and not on a counted ground, because you would say cross stitch and black work and hard anger are all counted techniques. Um, and that's certainly my comfort zone. There's, there's no question about that. Um, but some of these things are just so beautiful, but the, um, but the one, that, but so on her website, she sells the full kits. For the projects from this book as well as some if some if not all of her books and um, 
yeah, it, uh, if I were going to buy a kit, it, just for ease, because, you know, it's not just the threads, there's like gold work threads and the specific beads and the, like, yes, you could try accumulate all these things, but there's also something about the ease of having everything for certain reasons of a kit. But I don't need to buy this because if I haven't done anything with those kits, I'm not going to get to this one yet. That's what I tell myself. Um, also, in that same spirit of um, not buying myself a kit, you may know about Inspirations Magazine. It comes from Australia. Um, there was one year I got a subscription, which is four issues a year, which it was a special deal, I think, on Mary Corbett's website. And it's beautiful magazine. And ever since then, or even before then, on occasion when there's like one something I know about or I've seen it advertised or I've seen it somewhere. I will sometimes try and get one issue. So I know if I, other than the four issues that I have from that year that I subscribed, I had three other issues. So I know I had them all for specific reasons. One of them I wanted to share with all of you is something that I show that I just got recently. It's not the, the most recent issue I think is numbered. They don't put dates on, oh, they sort of do 2017. This is issue 95, number 95. I'm pretty sure they, Number 96 is the current one that's out. The reason I got this one, although the, this is what's on the cover, the bird is lovely. The specific reason I got it was for this black work rose, which, I mean, especially when I hold it like this, I just think is stunning. But what to me is really fascinating about this from a black work standpoint is that if you look closely, you will see it's all the same black work pattern the effect of the petals does not come from different black work patterns. It comes from different weights of thread and then the different, different using like, it's mostly different weights of thread and then a little bit of don't use the complete pattern, but it's mostly different weights of thread. And I would really like to do this. Um, Inspiration Magazine offers kits I'm so glad the shipping from Australia is so high because, again, I don't even allow myself to consider it. And in all honesty, this, it asks, it needs five different weights of black thread. Two of those are DMC floss, one strand of DMC floss, two strands of DMC floss. One of them is like um, black sewing thread, like a Guterman or something that's all cotton. Like, and especially because of like my lace supplies, I could put together the five threads that I need a count a ground cloth. I don't even know what I would use fabric wise, um, but I definitely want to do that. I want to see if I can get that effect because it's a neat challenge. I mean, it's just one pattern. That's what I just think is so cool about it. Now, I was so glad when I got this magazine. Again, I got it for that rose. But I also know there's always inspiring things. There were other things in here that intrigued me. Will I make them? I don't know. But it also made me pull out the other inspirations that I had. This is number 82. The reason I got this was the stump work that's on the cover. Um, there is a piece. This is the big glow up picture of it. I think that's beautiful. Have I done a lot of stump work? No, I've done like two pieces. Um, but it becomes one of those, the more you do it, the more you get, you do it all into one. Here's a picture of it, like in a frame. <clears throat> and then, how do I take this one out? There's probably something in here that I took out, but I had to put a sticky note on it. And so I don't know why I took this one out. Well, all right. Okay. So then I'm just going to go through this other pile again. This is sort of just, this is like nowhere near my entire stash. These are just the things that I would love to stitch with all the free time in the world. So when I, um, Back in September, October, and the whole patterns that I found at the library, there were actually very few that I personally was interested in. This is one of the very few 
ignore the colors. You have to get past the colors, okay? Janine Monroe, um, the designer that I've done a couple of her things, I, the colors, ignore the colors, but I'm intrigued by the design, the pattern, the stitching. Would love to do this someday. Can't at this time imagine what kind of color palette I'll use, but I'll decide at some point. This was a really neat um, hardanger thing that I, I know I purchased this through Nordic Needle. Um, I'm looking right now to see if I can find like a website. Um, there's an email address to see if this is still available anywhere. This is a hardanger piece. It was made to be a, um, well, like a table runner, but you put it on top of a piano, like especially like an upright piano. A hardanger that's got musical notes in it. And I had this vision of making something like this, but then adjusting it to be a few notes of a piece of music that has particular meaning to me. And as much as I could, you know, as much as I glanced at and looked at the directions, it would totally be doable as long as you're, you know, know what you're doing. Like this note doesn't need to be up here. It could be down there, up there. You know, I could adjust the notes to the music that I wanted. Okay, I don't own a piano. It's not. It's not like, um, I'll save my whole music story for another time because this is already being so long. Someday I'll come back and I'll tell you my whole music story. But there's a story. There's music involved. There's a specific piece of music, and um, this would be a beautiful thing to create. But it was originally designed to be on top of a piano. Another, I think the only other thing in this pile from the library sale, and this is just ridiculous to kind of show you because it looks like nothing on camera. It's really way more intriguing. Oh, I'm not, it's not even showing you anything. To look at the inside of this, um, it's it. I was going to say a canvas work piece, but I'm not even sure if it's done on canvas. No, it's done on 28 count linen, and it's got like this ridiculous list of threads, which I so wouldn't use. But there's some neat stitches. There's some neat, um, um, there's just some neat stitching going on in there. And I just think that there's some neat possibilities with color, with stitches. Again, not this exact thing, not on this color, not with all the threads they use, but it's an inspirational design to me. This was a ANG workshop by mail that I purchased, I did. Uh, which is to say when they call it a workshop by mail, it's not like a cyber course or anything where you're like getting interactions with a teacher. It's just like, here's a project, here's the instructions, you're done, that's it. Um, this picture is not as good as I know what was showing up on screen. I just loved the pieces of it, the challenge, the threads, the colors. It was, oh, this is the quit on me. Um, what kind of fabric is this done on canvas? I think Congress cloth. 13 inches by 13 inches. So it's not that big. And it uses silks and chronic braids. Um, could be done at DMC, of course, but with a lot of neat techniques in there. <laughs> this one I purchased um, not that long ago. It was being done, somebody was doing it on a blog with totally different color scheme. I so loved the stitches that were going on. I didn't I didn't even like the color scheme she was doing. Um, but like so many, because she was sharing her blog, excuse me, it's gonna say it on here. Because she, th Jan Sprague, for allowing me to use her aqua black colors. Jan Sprague, if you wanna look up her, um, blog. This is Debbie's Designs, crisscross. Uh, she released it, it was a class piece, but she released it through, um, something. You can buy it on her website. Maybe you could buy it on her website now, I'm not sure. And I feel like Gary, are you still watching? Gary from Fiber Talk posted a picture at some point where he pulled threads and he was going to do like a gray colorway really appealed to me. I haven't pulled threads, haven't started it. It's just in the pile. <sighs> in the 
Oh, here, okay. Well, I don't know if I can buy kits on these, but I, you might be able to. Hazel Lope Lom Camp. She's South African. New Zealand. No, travels throughout South Africa and Australia. Pretty sure she's from South Africa. So she has this book and another, there's another book on my shelf. And then I figured it was, you get the spirit if I pull out even one of them. And I had a bookmark in here. So I'm like, I must really like the design where the bookmark is. These books are stunning. I love this. I wouldn't do it on this color fabric. I don't know what color fabric I would do it on. And her um, directions are just, you know, she highlights what you're working on and talks about the stitching and the threads for that section. And then there's another one in here that uses a lot of needle lace techniques, but on fabric. And it's all white. Here we go. Here we go. Autumn lace. A white on white. Oh. I would do that with all the time in the world. I would do that. And I didn't even let myself take the other book I had off the shelf. I feel like she's even got a third book and I didn't even let myself buy it. I'm pretty sure this was thanks to uh, Mary Corbett on her website talking about her books. Should I keep going? <laughs> okay. Should I say it? There's more in this pile. This is crazy. I'll keep going. Okay, so this one was, I want to say, even just two years ago or so. Japanese bead embroidery. Okay, yes, you can laugh. This whole book is in Japanese. But don't worry. It comes with an English translation. I'll be honest. I don't know. It's kind of like the gold work idea. I don't know if I have the patience. Maybe not be the right word. Because to do this work, which is all beads, and I'll show you like the idea, I would kind of like this, the techniques, I mean, it's beads. I think many of us have attached beads to things, but there's some interesting techniques that are discussed. I mean, like look at a purse like that, but the whole technique that Japanese embroidery brings in to beading is really interesting. But I don't, like the times that I've done beading, sitting on the couch in my typical stitching spot, doing my stitching things, oh, look at that. Um, I don't know if I could get the same level of satisfaction and comfort and the repetitive movement and, and what I get and I need out of stitching to do what is needed to create these beautiful things. Um, and so I, oh, look at this. Um, and I feel like there was recently a new book put out in English <laughs> um, that, uh, again, the same techniques of Japanese bead embroidery. Um, not that I need any more books. I mean, this is enough if I want to do this. And I don't need, I mean, I recognize that you could do this on different levels. You can get seed beads that, that don't need to be these specific beads and uh, anyway this appeals to me but if I were to make a beautiful purse or clutch man I would need the event of the year the event of my life forget the dress forget the shoes I would well everything else would be planned around the clutch right What else is still in the pile? There's a point I shared with you about this book. I would do more needle painting from this book. I did the first piece, this little guy right there. I shared it in a video. Um, this book is so well written. I, this, I would so do more. In the spirit of what things have you not done, Arlene, in needlework, Schwamm, I think I'm saying that correctly, Schwamm, that's how my brain says it, white work which is, um, comes from Germany. Um, this is, uh, uh, thank you, Mary Corbett again. Um, so detailed, such, like if you're ever, like, yeah, I want to learn how to do this. And this dealt, uh, I was going to say uses a counted ground, but 
I need to remember more. Well, now I'm not, I don't remember. Some of it is counted. I mean, some of it, like, definitely look at that. There's definitely a need. There's definitely a need for a counted ground for that. Go over three stitches, over three stitches, over three stitches, but other parts of it are not. But this is just an intriguing type of white work that just appeals. And this Swedish weave for huck embroidery. This particular design, I mean, this is like the other end because you use like a really big weave and you need the very specific fabric, but just to make a big design like that, I just think is so beautiful. <laughs> so I'm at an hour and I've been sharing. And like I said, this isn't, these are just things that appeal to me as I started to go through my shelf and I'm like, there's so much more, but this, these are all appealing to me, but I couldn't do this without also doing it for my lace work. So if you want to see some lace projects that are along these same lines, stick around. Um, I have, I don't know if I've got some bobbin lace makers watching me, you can comment below to tell me if you agree with this statement. I have what I think might be the lace makers equivalent to Lady of the Flack. You tell me. I have Miss Chandler's mat. Okay. Now for the cross stitchers who are like, what did she just say? So Miss Chandler's mat gets talked about in lace circles, sort of in the same way Lady of the Flag does. I mean, not as much, not as much of sort of a running joke, but whenever it shows up on eBay. It always goes for a lot of money. It actually, though, very rarely shows up. There is always these like rumors that it's going to be reprinted, and it never is. And um, and it's just rare when you find someone who has it. And then when, um, like, at a lace convention, when it's you know one of the raffle items, it's always like one of the you know everyone's thrown their raffle tickets in that one. Um, a couple of times at lace conventions, people have had a, a Miss Chandler's mat on display. It's beautiful. Um, it was a lucky eBay find a few years ago. Um, I don't remember the details of it. It might have been something like I was poking around on eBay in the UK or something unusual, or I hit a I hit a buy it now in the right moment or, you know, those times where you just hit somebody who doesn't realize what they have. She did. It wasn't like she was giving it away. I mean, I spent money for it, but I didn't spend ridiculous money for it. So Miss Channer's mat is just, I mean, this, and this is the size. I mean, this is the pricking, which is to say it's the pattern. And, um, it was printed. It's 1991. And, there isn't much, by the way, of instructions to it. I'll be honest, I don't think my lace skills, and oh, and for those who are curious to know, um, Miss Chandler's mat, it will, uses about 250 pairs of bobbins, which is to say 500 bobbins, which is to say more than I own. Um, this pattern is for all lace makers looking for a chance to use every bobbin they own or buy more. This sample alone, this piece right here, required 186 pairs and about 250 pairs will be needed to complete the mat. Um, this doesn't come with a working diagram. My skill level, like, I don't, I, I would want to take on this challenge when I'm ready for it and I'm not at this point. Um, it might be something I would bring to a lace convention and start with a teacher who's familiar with bucks. It's a bucks point pattern. Um, you will not get bored with this pattern as it offers a constant challenge for your skill to your skills as a lace maker. As you work your way toward the solution of one problem, another entices you on to complete the mat. But yeah, so if you're a lace maker and you're watching me and you're saying, oh my God, she has Miss Chandler's mat. No, I will not sell it. I will be keeping this. Someday in my life, I will be making Miss Chandler's mat. And only then will I maybe consider passing it on to somebody else.
but and and the copy that I have was sold to me by someone who did not make it. This was this is a, a not used pricking, and she said she was ready to let it go because she acknowledged she was not going to make it in her lifetime, and she wanted to pass it on to somebody who was planning to make it in their lifetime. And I said, you're passing it on to someone who is. So this is um, my equivalent of Lady of the Flat. <laughs> and then again, I would love if there's any lace makers watching, if you could comment, do you agree? Is Miss Channer's mat like Lady of the Flat? Is it is it like the kind of same thing? Now, why is it called Miss Channer's mat? It comes from this book. Now, this book is a reprint of, I mean, I think this is like nine, early 90s, 1991, okay? But this is a reprint of a book that was originally published in 1900, but then even the 1900 version had reprints, and this book, where's, where's the picture? Um, do, 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 do. There is the mat, and it says on the preceding page, point ground lace designed by Miss Channer, worked by somebody else at one of the classes in 1926. So this, like the original guts of the book, was was published was written by Miss Channer. She has a first name, Catherine. Um, but then at some point, and I, I don't remember the details of the book. I mean, it's all about lace and history of lace and the decline of the lace industry and blah, 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 blah. Um, but at some point when there was a reprint of the book in the twenties, that pattern came into being and who created the pricking? Did the pricking just come into being in, in 19, yeah, 1991. Ruth Bean Publishers, pricking adapted by P Patricia B Burry from an earlier copy in her collection. Okay, now you're all bored with this. But anyway, Miss Channer's mat, kind of like Lady of the Flag. Okay, in that same spirit of my skills aren't there yet, but it's in the pile of will do someday. I shared this with you. I purchased this just this summer. It's my most recent... Um, I want to make this, it's in the stash, but it's not happening soon. Um, my skills aren't there yet, but I, it's, it's, to me, it's just so beautiful. Someday. Someday. Um, these are just so long, people. I'll just share a couple more of these and then I will cut it. Um, the, I, because I, the one thing, because I did bring it up here. I have this marked out. I will, this is, well say this like I have all the time in the world um in a magazine I, this is a lace magazine that comes from the lace guild in England I get I get their magazines four times a year um this is from whatever last year but I have this marked out and pulled out this is a pattern to make the pieces of chessboard and what appeals to me so much I brought I took this off the wall to share with you I've shared this before one of my earlier videos, so if you haven't watched earlier videos, completely understandable. This was a blackwork check chessboard I made. The designer is Leon Conrad. It's an old pattern, but it's, um, I think it's still possible to find here and there, the eBay kind of thing. Um, and it's blackwork, although there's some gold in there. And I also made chess pieces to go with it. And I loved this so much. And when I saw this, I thought, I want to make a lace version and I can create the squares to be the same size and um, I would alternate black and gold or I would use both black and gold thread like I would do like I would have hanging my blackwork version of a chessboard and my lace version of a chessboard they wouldn't be identical but there would definitely be the connection there and it was thanks to seeing this and to having the squares there's 16 different squares um, I could repeat each of them. I mean, there's different ways I can do this. And I just, um, it's definitely an inspiration. It's definitely, on the, it's also the kind of thing that I can make a square, work on another lace project, make another square. I, I know what threads to use. I just need to make it happen at some point. 
Um, what else do I want? I'll show this one. This is a book. Yes, it's in French. I, it's fine. Some of the designs are very simple. And, and the reason why I have this out to share with you all, during the time when everyone was very into the sulky threads, um, the whole idea that the number 12 weight is equivalent to two strands of DMC, and everyone was going all nuts to try that all out. Um, the When I wanted to try it, there was nothing that really appealed to me about what was easy to purchase. And what I had done is I had found a quilt store some distance, but at one point I went there, um, and loved the color selection you could get with the full spools, not the small spools that a lot of people were getting for um, cross-stitch purposes. But in the full spools, there were so many more colors available. And, um, or the spools that, that, never mind, you get it. I saw lots of colors at the quilt store. And I picked out this, this just this color scheme. If it has a name, it's not on here. It just was so, I don't know, can you see the colors? It's like lilac and indigo and periwinkle. Um, but realized that 30 weight could so work for lace designs. So this was a 12 weight, this is a 30 weight. And it is so in my plan. There's a couple things in here that I want to make using this because um, they're easy. It, it, it will, it's just about to see how the variegated thread will come out. That may be my next project. No, my next project. I recently got a new phone, finally. Um, and I want to do what I've seen a number of lace makers do. I got a clear cover. And what I've seen lace makers do is they make a piece of lace and they put it under the cover. And from a distance, like you just think it's like a, uh, like a sticker, but it's a real piece of lace that's under, that's, in, you know, between your phone and your cover. And so I need to find like either the right size pattern or try and draft something out myself that I want to make to have a piece of lace that I carry with me. That will likely be my next lace project. But then after that would likely be this. This video has already gone on way too long. Are you still with me here, people? For those of you who stayed around for the lace part, um, it's so much fun to share with all of you. I appreciate all of you so much. Um, I'm gonna try and put some links below of at least some of the websites and things of the stuff that I showed, if this inspires anybody to go add to their stash. And like I said, and I, this is kind of like the tip of the iceberg in terms of stuff that I own. It's just, it's the part of the iceberg that is actively, um, let's call it more of a volcano. And it's like the active lava part. There's plenty more um, to be found. Actually, a lot of lace things that I could be showing you, but a lot of their stitching stuff. There's so many more books that have so many more things. Um, Sometimes I wish a bunch of you could come visit me and we could come up here. I'm upstairs in my loft area and, and I could just like share my books with you because lots of other friends that come by are just so not interested in this part of my world. And that's why I think we all here in this floss tube community appreciate one another. So as I said before, I'm so thankful for all of you. So especially if you've hung with me here for this long video, I appreciate it. I hope you have um, a good week for whenever you've watched this, a good day, get some good stitching in. Till next time, thank you so much.